Market Mavens today. Joining us, Bill Sparopoulos, CEO of Core State's Capital Advisors. Doug Pita is the market strategist at JNW Seligman. Good to see you both. Welcome back. Hi, Bill. Bill, Hi, what Bill. do you make of this, uh, this market right now? The financials uh, calling the shots right now. No, the financials aren't calling anything. Investors are all upset because they lost their fanny. But you know what? <laughs> Not, love, thanks thanks for being with us today, Bill. I on with us. <laughs> <laughs> it is cable. I guess we can get away with that, You huh? can say Fanny. He's been working on that line all morning. Cable with a no, ticker. Right. <laughs> the bottom line is this. You know, um, bear markets don't end on good news. Bull markets do. And, again, you know, the, the news, the, the negative sentiment, the um, and investors are acting a lot like... Um, Lemmings, you know, they're, they're, one day they're buying commodities, the next day they're selling. The next what should day they be doing? Oil. What should they be doing? Well, number one, I think the key to success is you have to have a, a tactical strategy in markets like this where volatility rules. And that means you have to have stocks, bonds, cash, real estate, currencies, managed futures. So stay the course complex. with a diversified portfolio despite the volatility right and now. Nostradamus is quite dead. You know, the only <laughs> thing you can do is, is have capital in each one of those spaces. Okay, so Doug, what are you doing right now? I like the idea of staying the course. I would second that notion, but I think that you can tweak that staying the course by being more defensive. I continue to advocate with inequities, overweighting the countercyclicals, overweighting consumer staples and healthcare. Those are my two favorite sectors. I don't think it would hurt anyone to hold a little more cash right now, mm -hmm. and I think I would reduce my exposure to the most cyclical sectors. All right. What about, you know, Bill? A lot of people feel as though the global slowdown may really take its toll on the market, but increasingly a lot of people are also talking about the fact that it may dampen down some of the inflation that's been spooking the market as well. Do you buy that argument or not? Well, we're right there. You know, since the end of May, I was one of the, uh, the dopes that was saying at 147, this is lunacy. You've got to manage risk. There's too much speculation and I blah, blah, blah. $200, 175 Where is it now? Guess what? We've been looking for 80 90 and it's mm -hmm. a bull market correction. The energy crisis is not over, but you have to manage risk. You don't put 50% of your bloody portfolio in, in, in long-only uh, energy. Would you take a flyer, either of you? Raise your hand. Would you buy Fannie or Freddie at these levels right now, the common stock I'm talking about? You buy no, a lottery would. ticket. You, you buy, buy a lottery, lottery ticket instead. What about you, you don't Doug? Buy Fannie. I would not. I, no, I it's don't. It's $0.89. Cents. Well, you know what? If you're going to speculate, then maybe you go buy some of the Freddie and Fannie preferreds because when we're much older, maybe we'll get some money back. Yeah, but uh, that's the, you know we've been hearing from plenty of investors that's in right. the preferreds who've lost their shirts. They've been counting on that for income. We're going to talk about that with Chairman Barney Frank a little bit later. But there's no guarantee that they're even going to make money in this uh, deal right now. No, those are not uh, those are not good wages. Okay, so you, even though you can't break your arm falling out of a single story window, you wouldn't take a flyer on either of those companies right now. No. All right. Thank Thanks, you both. Guys. Good to see you. John Harwood is in New York because.